In this project, an aircraft is designed inside the computational zone filled with the airflow. The airflow travels toward the aircraft at 100 meters per second velocity and hits its fuselage. This project aims to investigate the pressure on the fuselage and the profile of the changes in velocity and pressure around the fuselage. The present geometry is designed in 3-dimensional via design model software. A giant cubic computational zone is designed to define the airflow and an aircraft is modeled within this computational zone. Furthermore, the mesh of the present model has been done via ANSYS meshing software. The mesh grid type is unstructured and the total number of the cells is 3,190,000. At the very beginning of the simulation, we need to import the mesh file. From File tab, Read and then Mesh. Choose the mesh file that you have downloaded with the other files. At the first step, we need to consider some general assumptions. First, we use pressure-based solver type because we are dealing with an incompressible fluid. And also, we have a steady simulation, it means the variables aren't a function of time. They may differ from point to point, but they do not change with time. And we neglect the gravitational effect, so let this box to be unchecked and get to model section and expand it. And open this cost tab. We prefer to use K omega SST model. This model is a two equation eddy viscosity model, which is a combination of K omega formulation and also K epsilon. It uses K omega formulation in the inner parts of the boundary layer and also switches to K epsilon behavior in the free esteem. So it doesn't have the common K omega problem. In the next step, we need to define the error for our material. So I get to material section. And as you can see, the error is defined by default in the software. But uh, I like to mention that just in case there isn't. You can find it in Fluent Database. So get to create and edit. When the settings window pops up, open Fluent Database and find it in the list. Uh, it's just right here. Just select like that and copy it. Then you will have it in the list. Alright, so let's check the cell zone. The error zone. As you can see, the material name is on error, so that would be correct. At the last step in setup section, let's get to the boundary conditions and change the view to the zone type to have a better list. And I start from the inlet. Its type is velocity inlet and define a hundred meters per second velocity magnitude for the inlet with the turbulence intensity and viscosity ratio of 5% in 10. At the outlet, we've got a pressure outlet type boundary condition and as it is, the gauge pressure should be on zero. It means the air leaves the domain to the atmosphere. And also, the backflow turbulence intensity and viscosity ratio is just like the inlet. But uh, in case there is any backflow. And at the last boundary condition, wall of the aircraft. It is a stationary wall with no slip shear condition. ANSYS Fluent offers us four different pressure velocity coupling schemes. The pressure based solver allows us to solve our flow problem in either a segregated or coupled manner. Using the coupled approach offers us some advantages over the non coupled or segregated approach. This algorithm solves the momentum and pressure based continuity equations together. And also, we use second order often for discretization because of its higher accuracy. To check convergence of the solution, we usually use residual values, which will be discussed later, but they can be trustable always. There is a supplementary option, and we can define a report for a sensitive parameter and monitor it in each iteration from report definition section. In this simulation, we want to monitor the drag and lift force. So right-click on report definition and make a new report. First, in the opening window, you can define a name for it, and then check the drag coefficient and also the wall aircraft from zone box. We know that the drag force is exerted on the aircraft in the direction of the flow, 
which is in y direction, so change the force vector. Do the same thing for the lift force. Notice that the lift force is perpendicular to the drag force, which means it is in z direction. So in this simulation, we don't need the residuals. So get to monitor's residual and uncheck the check convergence criteria, or easily put zero for one of them. Then get to initialization part. Use the standard initialization to compute the initial values. Finally, get to run calculation. Define an appropriate number of iterations and click on calculate button to start the simulation. Well, I paused the video to shorten the video and now we get to the convergence. So let's begin the post processing section. Before we get to that, I need to define two planes, one in y z direction at the middle of the geometry and the other time with a uh, little distance. So get to the surface from the upper toolbar and create a plane. Change the method to y z and then create one of them. Define another one with minus 2 meters in x direction. Now we'll start from the contours from graphics section. Open contours. In the settings window, we need to define the variable first. If you click on pressure, you, you can see a wide range of options provided by ANSYS Fluent. I start with velocity, then from surfaces box, choose the defined surface. You can easily change the variable and also the surface. There is an other option which is velocity vectors. The settings are very similar to the contours, so just select the vectors of velocity and then the surface. Maybe they are very small, but uh, you have further options in color map option or you can easily scale them to make them bigger and clear. Apart from all of these options, we've got an amazing three-dimensional options, which is path lines. I want path lines to be colored by the velocity vector, so I change the particle variables to velocity. And then I want them to be released from inlet, so select inlet and then display it. As you can see, it's not very clear, but again, we have further options in color map options. But right now, I need to skip some of them, because uh, there are a lot. So I increase the path escape. Maybe the inlet wasn't a good option, so I changed the inlet to the surface, which we have defined. Now it gets better, and you can easily see the path lines on the aircraft. After the calculation, two-dimensional and three-dimensional contours related to pressure and velocity are obtained. The contours show that significant pressure and velocity changes appearing around the fuselage. The pressure contours show the maximum pressure is exerted on the front of the aircraft, and the velocity contours indicate that a separation zone is created on the aircraft's rear. Also, the drag and lift force on the aircraft is equal to 17 ton and 10 kN respectively. To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mr-cfd.com or www.mr-cfd.com.